Thank you for having me this afternoon. So the other thing that, that Ryan left out is uh, we actually have an Irish wolfhound dog. So um, a lot of people in Fair Acres actually don't know me, but they know the dog. Um, so if you ever see an Irish wolfhound uh, in Fair Acres, that is mine. Um, so thank you for having me this afternoon. I'm gonna talk about two primary um, things today. So the first thing is resident engagement and leisure services projects. So the resident engagement piece, um, first we're gonna talk about civic rec and then BMA highlights and then what we've done with uh, this is Kingsport. So um, civic rec is something that's primarily for um, leisure services. And so when I came into this position, I always ask, we need to be customer facing, we need to have um, easy ways to interact with our customers. And so um, civic rec is a software specifically for leisure services. So that's where you can do facility re reservations. That's uh, your league signups. That's buying tickets for Bays Mountain. And so what I kind of wanted to do is I actually bought a ticket for Bays Mountain for this Sunday for a uh, history barge ride led by the associations. I was actually just going to kind of walk through this process um, to see what that's like. So to get to civic rec, there's really two primary ways. And um, anytime I can, I plug in the city app, Connect Kingsport. And so this picture is actually out of date. So I think as of yesterday, we got to 8,000 um, issues fixed at all time. But if you do not have the Connect Kingsport app, please during my presentation, go to the app store and download it. Anything with city services from reporting concerns to um, getting the civic rec to knowing what the leaf line is, what your trash pickup dates, that can all be done uh, through this app. So um, I went to uh, Bays Mountain's website, which you can see here. Um, in their website, they have a scroll and a calendar of all the events. Um, so I said, hey, I want to go on the guided history barge ride at Bays Mountain that's just uh, this Sunday. Um, so on the website, and this is all done on a mobile device, so it's very accessible. I just click there to register. Um, you can see here, it takes me to uh, Civic Rec, which is where you can buy your tickets. It automatically filters your activity. And uh, I actually did not plan this, but when I bought my ticket earlier this week, I don't know if that's shown up very well, but there's 25 slots and 23 of them were filled. And so this just goes to show this is something previously at Bays Mountain Park, if you're wanting to go on a barge ride this Sunday, you would have just gotten to the park and then been turned away. So this really allows you to pre-plan your day um, from everything from going ahead and having your planetarium show tickets. Um, during the summer, we have those sell out. We have 98 seats in the planetarium, um, but you still have capacity issues there. So um, from there, you can see that myself and my wife uh, both have a profile uh, within the system. And so I just added both of us to the cart there. So that now we'll have that um, barge ride at maximum capacity so no one else could be double booked for that. Um, you can see here we got our tickets here where this is an association program. Um, there was a charge. If you are a Bays Mountain member for a regular barge ride, it would automatically discount your account there. Um, but where this is an association program and benefits them, there's a charge for that. So from there, um, I have a prompt here where this is the association. I actually get to determine where my dollars go to. So I'll tell you, I actually supported the animal habitats here. So then I moved right on along, um, went to the payment right here, um, entered my card information. So we're currently working with our merchant account so you can actually save a card on file. So the once you've uh, used Civic Rec right before, you'll just be able to go right through the process moving forward again. And then you can see that I checked out right here. So the total time it took me from being on Bays Mountain Park's website, and this is with entering card information, uh, was right at three minutes. And so that's something that previously we never had. Uh, it does allow you to plan your days, and I think it's a really great feature. And we have seen a lot of uh, transactions go online um, at the Aquatic Center this summer. Instead of standing in line, we had people pre-purchase tickets, and then we had basically a fast pass line. Um, the people that pre-purchased were able to go through. And uh, I know that Ryan saw that in the works uh, when he was going to the Y with his family, and so it's been really great. Um, the second thing I wanted, the next two things I want to talk about is I don't go to a Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting where I do not discuss with some board member about the need for resident engagement and getting people involved and how do we get the word out. And so really what I want to talk about is, in my opinion, the two easiest ways 
to keep up to date with what's going on in king sports so uh, i'm 30 so i'm a millennial um, my friends don't like to go out and find things and so this is one of those things i tell my friends hey you go sign up once you're done it automatically comes to you so the first thing is a uh, <coughs> bma highlights so if you get to this if you just go to uh, www.kingsport10.gov you scroll down about two-thirds of the way on the home page um, this sign up will be right there so you just enter your email address and you'll automatically get that so what's included in the bma highlights well you get nice project status updates so you know what's going on with the city there's a lot of road projects uh, that I don't deal with that Ryan's group does and and so that really that's the only time I really may see those projects so I actually look through those myself you have your top three items uh, spotlighted on the agenda here so you can see what the board approved um, we always have our recognitions and awards so we had a uh, public works award here for one of our long uh, long serving employees BK Addington and we also had a uh, recognition for the carousel uh, being recognized as one of the nicest places in America's by Reader Digest magazine. So it's always really good to see the positive things that we're doing in Kingsport and those recognitions that we get. So moving on from that, um, we have work sessions on the Monday prior to the Tuesday board meetings. Um, so at those work sessions we typically have a, a presentation much like we do today so we always have those presentations actually on that email so you can literally just click this presentation that the ETSU College of Nursing gave um, at our last meeting and you can look through that entire presentation just like you were actually at um, the BMA meeting um, the other thing is you get to look at our sales tax report as well as you can just look at our entire agenda or you can um, watch live on our website right there. So I think this is really great. It automatically generates. Actually, I don't know how our communication staff gets it out so quickly. Um, a lot of times I'll see the notification for this come up on my phone when I'm still at the meeting room. Um, so you really get that instantly and it's a really great resource. Um, the next one I want to talk about is this is Kingsport. So our marketing team has done a lot of work on developing a website that has a calendar and really just all events in Kingsport can live here. So if you have a one-stop shop to really see what's going on in Kingsport. So once again, just ease of access. This was taken through screenshots on my iPhone. Um, so when I went to the website, we had the new Christmas in Kingsport, which is a project we worked on with the Downtown Kingsport Association, which you can click there to get additional information. As you can see, if you scroll down um, the screen here, there's a ribbon with the, it rotates with all the events that we have going on. So you can see we have some uh, park kayaking at Bays Mountain, as well as a planetarium show. And then the important part is right down here, you have the free SMS and email alerts. And that's really what I want to talk about. So you'll just hit that subscribe now button, enter your cell phone number, and then every Thursday, you'll get a text message that will look like this that really just lists everything going on in Kingsport. So not only is it stuff that the city's doing, but you can see here that you have high voltage, um, you have the car show at Allendale, you have some uh, events going on at Gyp Gypsy Circus, uh, Cider Circus, um, we have kickball fun night done by our Parks and Rec, you can see we have an aquatic center event down here, you got succulents and sangria, um, some other classes, wire wrap pendants. So really you can just, it, it's overall and also the theater guild is up here as well. Um, so really it just gives a broad overview of everything that we have going on in Kingsport and it comes to your phone in a text message. So it's very easy to know what's going on. So um, that kind of wraps up this part of the presentation as we move into a leisure services project updates. So last year we celebrated Bays Mountain Park's 50th anniversary. It was a fantastic year, very positive momentum for the park. So I'm going to spend a lot of time on those projects. And then if I have time, I'm going to kind of recap some other projects we have going on as well as some that are completed. Um, so one of the things is a, is a city, when we do things, we really want to have studies and workshops and, and really understand what the need is before we start executing a project. So this is a list of nine studies and workshops that we've done at Bays Mountain Park between 2010 and 2020, um, just to show that we really have a lot of information to base our decisions off of moving forward with the park. So out of that, the common threads uh, you can see here, the ones with green check marks are things we've done, but as you can see, 
although um, we had these studies done for 10 years, we have actually have done or are in progress completing most of the items that are identified uh, in that. So current and future projects that's going on at the mountain. So the biggest one we're going to talk about is the uh, Nature Center Phase 1 renovations. Um, the amphitheater we're going to talk about a little more in depth. The balcony renovation um, actually I think starts next week. Um, so we have a great balcony there, but there's a lot of upgrades we're going to do to it. We've actually done a lot of clearing to be able to see the lake um, from the balcony. The fox habitat relocation, which uh, needs to be done before the amphitheater, as well as some animal habitat improvements for phase one. Um, the fox den playground is something um, that there's going to be more information on in the future, but it'll be a natural playground. So a lot of times when you're looking at a playground, it's, a, it's plastic, it's um, you know those types of materials. So we really wanted to have a playground and something, a destination for kids, but that also uh, was in line with the mission of the park um, as a nature preserve. Um, the observation uh, tower renovation, which a lot of people don't know this, but off of Cliffside Trail, there is actually another tower. And this is actually a picture I was up there um, this last Wednesday. We were able to kind of do some clearing around the structure to get views. And you can actually see into uh, North Carolina and then Roan Mountains kind of over here in this area. So if you've never been up there, that's actually about a 10 to 15 minute hike from the Nature Center. So there's a lot less intensity than climbing all the way to the fire tower. And really we're trying to create destinations uh, to get people to the park. Um, things for future funding is an otter habitat, uh, additional animal habitat improvements, as well as a second and potentially third phase uh, to the Nature Center. So kind of going through the Nature Center upgrades, this is, if you walk up to Bays Mountain today, this is what the exterior of the Nature Center looks like. So you can see that there's not really a great um, delineated uh, entry area, and there's a lot of um, trees and grown up vegetation um, that's with, went within 10 feet of the building envelope, which is something we are um, working to alleviate. So this is what we hope it looks like when in phase one of the renovation is done. So we added uh, an awning here, um, as well as create a true entrance. Another thing that we're trying to do as we work through and look at this process is we're questioning whether or not to use pathways um, that are oil-based um, as a nature preserve and having oil-based pathways. We're trying to say, okay, does that really make sense? What alternatives are out there um, to get done what needs to be done, um, but also be accessible and meet ADA standards. Um, so when you walk into the Nature Center, this is uh, what you're greeted with. So it's, um, it's, it's very dark. Um, the gift shop, I call it the structure within a structure. And so that's kind of what you're greeted with. Um, the planetarium door, so we recently did a lot of improvements to the actual planetarium equipment, but not the uh, exterior of it. So this is actually the door that you go through. So once again, just going back to that presentation and the entryways, um, that's definitely an area that we view that we have an opportunity to improve. Um, and this is another picture of the gift shop, and you can see, I mean, it, it truly is a structure within a structure. So um, this is kind of what we see the front of the planetarium having an actual entryway here, um, really fixing that, dressing this up some. But really I think the most exciting part to me is the gift shop area and the floor space uh, when you get in there. So we really want to brighten the space. Um, we want to get rid of the structure within the structure. We're actually going to push the gift shop area um, back a little bit to create more floor space. When you kind of go back and look at the current gift shop, you can probably fit about five people in this little space here. So you're very limited um, in what you can have out. And so we really want to brighten the space up. We definitely want to have some public art or some type of uh, graphic over here on this wall um, and really just create a better customer experience and really drive people um, to the Nature Center. So moving on to the amphitheater, so this is a, a vicinity map just to kind of get a location of where that is. So the existing amphitheater would actually kind of be on the wall down here. Um, so we're going to put this here, we're going to move some of the deer habitat, and then add some ADA parking here. Um, for time's sake, I'm going to go past this slide. Um, so this is what it'll look like. So um, we all know how construction, pro if anyone's not been in construction right now. Uh, it's very expensive uh, due to inflation. 
Um, so this is what we hope it looks like. So this is seating for about uh, 370 folks. Uh, the stage, you have 700 square feet. We're going to have restrooms um, on a lower level below that as well as some changing rooms. Uh, we've worked with our planetarium staff on AV um, considerations and what we can do there. And then the other exciting part really is this tower over here, um, which will be ADA accessible and will provide an overlook into the deer habitat as well as some exhibit area uh, that's within that tower. Um, the other very cool thing about this amphitheater so the the seating area in the first two rows um, we're going to put benches there but the other rows it's actually six feet wide so someone could bring a portable chair um, and things like that so it's very exciting um, so just kind of moving on to um, recently completed projects um, just to let you know what we kind of have going on with the city the first one is the scott adams memorial skate park which you can see we have an aerial shot there. If you haven't seen it, it's truly phenomenal. Um, it's really interesting if you YouTube the skate park and you see people from all other states coming here and really bragging about how great our park is and what an asset it is to our community. Um, pickleball court conversions, so that's, uh, we converted four tennis courts into a total of eight pickleball courts. Um, we did the planetarium upgrades. Preston, Fort pa Preston Forest Park, we had additional playground equipment. Um, pavilion and other spaces like that. Linview Project Diabetes was a $450,000 grant through the state. So we added a playground equipment, shade structures, a pickleball court, a half basketball court at our Linview Community Center. Um, the Senior Center Atrium, so if anyone had been to the bottom part of the Renaissance Center, you would have seen that there were planters uh, kind of in the atrium area. So we removed those so that they could have space for programming. And two weeks ago, they actually had a casino night that had almost 200 people in attendance that we simply weren't able to do that type of programming previously due to space constraints. Um, Allendale Paving Phase 1, Allendale Landscaping Phase 1, Moonshiner's Delight Trail was another trail at Bays Mountain. It's a 4.2 mile uh, mountain biking trail. We did upgrades to the Senior Center Wood Shop. We added a heated outdoor pool at the Aquatic Center. We replaced the Pro Shop roof at uh, Cattails, and we implemented story walks at two additional parks. So projects that we have on the horizon, so uh, River Bend Phase 1, which is right there behind the Walmart on Fort Henry, that's under construction now. It'll probably be the first part of the year before that's completed. Uh, Metaview re-roofing, uh, we had three cranes up when I was there earlier this week. Um, that's over 100,000 square feet of roofing, so that's a very large job. Uh, archives move and demo, so we actually had our archives open house uh, yesterday as well as a program. We had 115 folks come out and visit our archives. Um, Allendale revegetation, uh, bike park pump track, which will be adjacent to the Scott Adams Memorial Skate Park. We're doing upgrades to the farmer's market. Um, if you've seen the, the inside of the farmer's market, there's some paint peeling on the ceiling and that's just done to the ventilation of the space. So we're ventilating the space and adding uh, big tail fans and tail isn't the name of the company, but you can uh, use your imagination. Um, cattails collar replacement. So we're going in and adding, um, taking out the existing collars and putting in Tullahoma 31 Bermuda grass which is a transitional um, season grass. Um, Greenbelt Extension to Lewis Drive working on a, a cement hill master plan and then we applied for a Blue Cross Blue Shield um, healthy play place um, that we should know something about later on uh, in December. So those are kind of the projects we have and if I have just one more minute I'm going to show some fun stuff. So the cool thing about being uh, in leisure services is you get to do very cool things. So this was a field trip to uh, Grandfather Mountain that we took uh, last Wednesday. So this bear here is named Charlotte and um, does everybody know Vice Mayor George? I think everybody knows Vice Mayor George. So um, I had to remind her that you can't pet the bears and uh, she didn't need to stick the hand through the fence. So uh, that was a really good time. And this is Uno the Otter. And um, you're asking, well, why is his name Uno? Well, well Uno is actually a bad otter and he can't get along with the other otters. And so um, unfortunately <laughs> he has to stay uh, by himself in quarantine. So um, very interesting, but he loved humans, but he could not get along uh, with his brother and sister here. They're in this picture, but um, it's really great to be in Kingsport. Um, really enjoy serving the community. So I guess we move on to uh, questions.